CEO and co-founder, right, yeah. of Unparticle, yeah. and co-founder, uh, and he's going to be talking about mobile data. And uh, Michael, please take it away. Cool. So, uh, just this button. That, just that button. Click away. Love it. Um, cool. So let's see. Let me get this straight here. Oh. Yeah, I'll give it a minute. All right. Um, so I'm here to talk about how to create a, uh, a winning mobile data strategy. Um, so whether you're here to learn more about UA or retention or analytics or, or CRM um, or maybe just want to spend a couple days in Vegas, um, I, won't, I won't judge. Um, the, the common fiber across all of it uh, aside from partying in Vegas, is being able to better leverage your, your first party data. Um, so your data is the underpinnings of, of growth. Let's try to get this thing working. Um, oh, nope, OK. Um, so you know, your, your data is the underpinnings of, of, of growth, right? So no matter what you're looking to do, the data is the common fiber across all of it. So what I'm going to talk about over the next um, 15 minutes or so is how to get more value out of your data, right? So, so apps are different, right? Like I don't need to convince anybody in this room about that. Um, you can do things in apps that you can't do on the desktop web or, or mobile web. Um, and this creates both a number of really interesting and, and unique opportunities, but it also creates a number of um, interesting and unique challenges. So. Um, the, the, the core principle behind all of it is that there's, um, the, the data is just different, right? The, the data that is generated as a result of users using a mobile app is fundamentally different than the data um, that's created from users uh, engaging on a website, right? Um, see, web data fits nicely into this who, what, and where model. Who is the user? What are they doing? Where are they doing it? And the where is usually about, like, page level context. So obviously for mobile, the where is, is very different. It extends into the physical world. Um, it extends to where you are and, and, and who you're with. But then there's a number of uh, really rich data points outside of that web paradigm, push tokens, exceptions, a lot of the device telemetry data that you really have to think about capturing if you want to create really rich, engaging um, uh, experiences uh, for your users. Um, and while that may not seem like a big deal, it really is. Um, it's your kind of classic 80-20 rule. Um, there's probably 80% overlap in the data that's available, but uh, it, it really only unlocks 20% of the, of the value, um, which is why you have this incredible ecosystem of, uh, of mobile partners. Um, so I'm not sure how many people in the room have, have seen our periodic table. Can I just get a quick? Kind of show of hands. All right, pretty pretty decent. Um, cool. So um, you know the 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 common link across all these tools is data, right? Um, if you want to work with any of these guys, you need to get your data into their platforms. And there's no difference between marketing data and analytics data, CRM data and attribution data. It's all customer data. Don't confuse how it's being used with what it is. Um, there's a number of awesome companies um, on, this, uh, on this chart, uh, many of which are here uh, over the next couple of days. I would encourage many of you to, to, to meet with them. I'm truly, personally, a, a, a fan of you know, just about everybody on, on our periodic table. Um, so the interesting thing is, uh, as you think about the, the life cycle of app development, you start with one challenge and you find a solution. It's usually like, how do I ensure my app is as stable as possible? So you implement uh, a, a crash reporting uh, SDK. And then how do I optimize my user flows and get an understanding of my cohort? So you may implement uh, an analytics tool or, or two. And then uh, once that's been optimized, you, you may want to go and play offense and implement uh, an attribution partner or an MMP. So you, you load that in the app. And 
over time, and then, and then you start thinking about like, well, how do I keep my users engaged? Um, so you, you invest in a, a mobile marketing platform. Um, so then what happens kind of over time is you build this like Frankenstein's monster, this really bloated app, and um, you're, you're duplicating your efforts in terms of tagging, um, you're bloating the app, you're jeopardizing user experience, you're, you're, you're slowing down the app. And then the engineering team says, well, time out, I'm, I'm not doing this ever again, right? And so then really like only three things can happen. Um, you just go into total lockdown mode in which you can't get any more uh, vendor SDKs implemented. Um, you, uh, you continue kind of as is with this kind of uh, high overhead setup. Or the, or the last situation is, is you start to invest in a, in a data platform, um, a place where you can start to centralize all of your customer data so that you can easily connect it to, uh, to a number of, of, of these vendors. Um, so the, the, the problem with taking a tool-centric approach in terms of being overly reactive, you have a problem, add a solution. Have another problem, add another solution, is that it creates pain across the org. So usually when you're trying to um, when you're trying to get something implemented, you're not only competing with uh, other initiatives that you're trying to, to further internally, but you're competing against like the entire roadmap. So from an engineering standpoint, I mean, I have yet to meet a mobile engineer that actually likes deploying SDKs and then signing up to, to maintain them. Um, marketers get stuck using uh, the, the same tools that they, that they have been, and, and maybe they outgrow them. Um, potentially what that means is that they're leaving money on the table. They're not able to capitalize on opportunity. For analytics teams, there's no single source of truth. There's conflicts. There's discrepancies. You're not really sure like, what data to trust, what not to trust. And then the C-suite, it's about um, kind of overall execution risk. And then potentially falling out of compliance in terms of data capture, data retention, and how does that align to your privacy policies. Are, is data being sent securely, or are there security risks? The whole thing can kind of get out of control pretty quickly. Um, so let's talk about how to actually create a mobile data strategy. Um, you know, start taking control of your data and being mindful and thoughtful about, um, about your, your, your business practice over the course of the life cycle of your, of your app. Um, and I know, look, it's, it's a lot easier said than done. Um, the analogy I like to use is kind of like healthy eating. Um, you may not see changes overnight, but what you will see is tremendous changes that compound over time. Um, so step one, um, define your business objectives. You know, what are your KPIs? Um, how do you want to engage your, your users? What are you trying to accomplish? How do you think about user segmentation? Um, Two, data mapping. As, as I mentioned, don't just think about capturing uh, custom events and kind of the, the high-level lifecycle events, but also start thinking about capturing the really rich um, mobile data points, uh, the stuff that are, that are native to apps, things like push tokens and exceptions, because these create really rich engagement opportunities. Um, three, uh, naming conventions. I mean, this is, this is huge. When you think about how to name your events and your attributes, it has to be simple. It has to be consistent. It has to be easy to understand. Remember, when you're, when you're creating a naming convention, um, what, you, what you create will show up in, in, in potentially multiple platforms. So something short, something concise, something consistent. Um, four, map your hierarchy of, uh, of, of user IDs. The more user identity information that you collect on your users, the higher the match rate you will have with uh, marketing platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Google. Um, so it'll allow you to scale much more effectively, um, whether you're doing UA or, or whether you're doing retention. Um, so use cases. Um, map your use cases. You know, how do you plan on engaging your users? Map, map, these, uh, map these tactics to the various engagement triggers and the engagement points throughout the life cycle, throughout the funnel. Um, Six, you know, what, is the, what does the tech stack look like? Um, again, I mentioned like, there's, there's really three choices. You can, you can do nothing, um, which is you know, just really act as kind of a, a walled garden. That's not necessarily the most effective strategy. Um, you can kind of continue as is and carry a, a high amount of overhead, 
or you can start to invest in a, in a centralized data layer. And then the last piece is, is privacy, right? Privacy is um, kind of the, 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 the flip side of the, of, of the personalization uh, trade-off, right? So you need to make sure if your users are not comfortable with their data being collected and, and, and shared, you have to respect that. You have to have a way to, to mitigate any kind of risk. Um, so this is, this is a diagram on, on essentially what a data platform looks like. So data comes out of the app into a platform like MParticle, and then we connect it either through server-to-server -server APIs or through embedded kits. Um, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to minimize the number of SDKs required in app. It allows you to, to, to remotely control what, uh, what SDKs are on and, and, and off, provides kill switch-like functionality, control over what data is sent, where it's sent, when it's sent. You can replay historical data to, to new vendors so that you're always in control of your data. You don't have to have your data trapped in eight different platforms. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so a, a couple of the specific use cases that, that this enables, just to get into, into some of the more tactical components, um, if you want to add a new vendor in, in minutes rather than months, I mean, we talked to a number of clients on, on the, the low end, it can take you know, a, a couple weeks, usually six weeks on average, to get a new vendor implemented from the, the day which you identify them, vet them, all the way through go live, all the way up to a, a, a year or two. Um, uh, let's see, getting data from your, your marketing platform to your analytics platform, being able to do better analysis, closed loop analysis, bringing in data from your, um, from your payment solution so you can even go one step further or, or getting data offline if you have a notion of like offline transactions. Um, doing splits between two marketing platforms. So if you want to A-B test two different push vendors or re-engagement solutions, you don't have to risk overexposure or, um, or jeopardize bidding against yourself in these, uh, on these marketing platforms. Um, and then the last thing is like, uh, you know, creating audience segments, um, creating a static audience definition, and then dynamically sending that to, to multiple platforms. So if you're looking to, say, re-engage dormant users and you connect that, that audience to Facebook and Twitter and Google and a bunch of other places, someone sees an ad on Facebook, they click it, they go back into the app, they're no longer dormant. Well, that needs to be propagated uh, in real time out to all of the rest of the partners that you're using to, to drive retention. So making sure that you can optimize things globally and reduce media waste. Um, all important use cases for thinking about, you know, does a platform, does a data platform make sense to me and, 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 and does it create value? Um, so here are five important uh, considerations as you think about, like, does a, does a data platform make sense? Um, you know, how do you, how do you create alignment between growth initiatives and, uh, and engineering resources? Oftentimes, um, your, your objectives, your, your core mission is kind of at the complete opposite end of what the engineer wants to do, right? Um, they don't necessarily care if you aren't fully satisfied with the tool that you've begged, borrowed, and uh, pled for to get implemented. They just implemented another SDK. So how do you, how do you create that, that, that trade-off between you needing to drive growth and them needing to burn down items on the, on, on the, on the product roadmap? Um, you know, how do you automate data flow to, to external vendors and, and internal platforms? How do you get data to your, your data warehouse? How do you create that single point of truth? Um, how do you maintain data ownership? Like I mentioned, th there's this awesome ecosystem of really innovative, exciting companies. The guys that were doing the most innovative stuff six months ago are not necessarily the ones that are, that are leading the way today. And I think it's safe to say um, that that will absolutely be true six months, a year, two years from now, right? So as you think about trying out multiple vendors, how do you make sure your historical data is not locked in these different systems? How do you make sure that your data is portable? Um, and then ultimately, like, how do you how do you minimize the app bloat or the or the tax to the consumer? The more SDKs you are, uh, are 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 stuffing into the app, the more times that they're sucking data out, um, 
the only person that loses is, is the end user, right? And, and at the end of the day, that makes it really tough for everybody in here to, to do their job, right? Um, it, it creates higher churn, it lowers retention, it drives up user acquisition costs. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, not necessarily the, the sexiest stuff, but how do you control for, for privacy and security? Um, make sure that everything is being sent over secure protocols, um, everything should be encrypted along the entire data journey, at rest, um, from the time it's collected to the time it's in the app, encrypted along um, as, it, as it gets sent down to, to the various endpoints. Um, and, and that's really it. Uh, we're trusted by a number of the, the, the best apps around. Um, a number of my colleagues are here over the next uh, couple days. So feel free to come say hello. Um, we, have a, we have a suite up there. We're having a party tonight. So thanks for, uh, thanks for listening to me. Appreciate it. Wonder. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, may I ask you?